Hey guys, this is Jackie, your nerdy crafter, and today I wanted to share a kind of first experience with watercolor. And as you can see, I wanted to sketch a monster. If you know me, you know I love monsters. And in this sketch, you'll see that I changed my mind quite a few times when it came to the legs and the shape of the head. So at first, I wanted kind of to make the front legs really bulky and scary. But then I decided to keep going with a kind of lion type leg. And then I made the head a little more shaped because at first I thought I was going to make it a little more bulky but I looked at some pictures of lizards and I figured that was not the one I wanted so as you can see the head changed so much since the beginning and I had to change my mind quite a bit and that's why sketching is so important now when it comes to the watercolor I was trying a little bit of everything so I tried wet on wet at first and you'll see that when you put the paint, it's just so satisfying to see the paint kind of just drift and go with the flow. And I thought the effect was really cool, but it didn't give me what I wanted because I don't know much about watercolors. So I just played around and had fun. And I know that looking back at this in a few months, I'll probably be like, huh, I really had no experience whatsoever. So this is just me laying down the colors and I'll show you guys all the materials at the end. So I wanted this creature to be a purplish and gray color, kind of to seem dark, but I'm not, I was not going for a galaxy look. I just wanted the mixture of the purples and the grays to be natural and just to kind of complement each other. I have so much respect for watercolor artists. They make it seem so easy. And when I was laying down the colors, of course, as usual, my fingers slipped a little bit and I got too much color on one side and I tried to fix it, but I had a bit of a hard time doing that. And I went back on top of the purples because I found that the separation between the gray and the purple was a little too defined and I didn't want that. I really wanted it to blend. And I made around the eyes a lot darker and under the jaw as well because I wanted it to be a lot more defined. I really like the tail. I'll have to say that I used a lot more water than usual and because I am using the Pentel water brush, it helped me make the blending seem more flowy, <laughs> I guess if that's a word. So I really like the pincers on the tail. I debated if I wanted a scorpion type or kind of like a crab type. Again, a little mistake and I tried to fix it. <laughs> so as you can see, it's not always perfect. Now I felt like the head was still not defined enough and I needed a third color to make things a little more interesting. So I went in and I added some reds and you'll see once I add the red behind the, I guess, I don't know what they call them, I guess the horns in the back, it really does define it much better. And I wanted a green glowy eye just to kind of give it an eerie look and just a little definition on the nose. The ground is nothing special, I just used a burnt umber and I wanted to keep around the monster itself just white so that way it does stick out more. When it came to the sky or the background, I kind of wanted it to feel like it was trapped either in a dungeon or somewhere you know really dark so I wanted to have a brick background kind of feel so as soon as I put down the gray, I had checked online for different kinds of textures that I could do with watercolor. And one of them was to put cellophane paper on top while it was wet. And what it does is that it lets you create kind of a, I guess texture, but it's hard to define what kind of texture, but it does look like bricks. So when I laid it down the first time, I didn't do it quick enough because the watercolor had already started to dry. So when I removed it, it gave me some texture, as you can see, but not enough. So then I went over it again and I added, so I, I added more of the gray and then I put it again. And as you can see, it's much better. One of my regrets is actually using the black to do the outline. I wish I had used maybe a darker purple to do that so that it's a lot softer, but it's, it's looking okay, but I wish I had used a softer color to do the outline for this part. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. 
I think it's not bad for my first time using watercolor and I really love monsters and I hope that I can evolve my monster making skills. So I think it's pretty cute. So I was using my PBO watercolors, nothing fancy, just regular watercolors, the Pentel brush for the most part, regular pencil for sketching and a Micron 0.3 for the outline and just a regular brush. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really am loving adding these coloring videos and experimenting and just showing you guys that even if you're not that good, it's fun to play around and just have fun. It's That's exactly what a skill is. It's there to keep you happy and keep your mind active. Until then, I will see you guys on Thursday. If you guys like collecting art books like I do, you're going to love Piper's art. She has some really cute images of wordplay and puns and they're absolutely hilarious and adorable. She has currently a Kickstarter that is ending really soon, so make sure you check it out. I will leave the link in the description box below. There are lots of different types of rewards to get your own of her art book. This is really cool and it's in Canadian dollars, which makes it so much cheaper if you're living in the US.